Um, I'm going to present uh, a little bit about the experience we had working in the 5 nanometer FinFET process, uh, and I'm going to show some data uh, to give you a sense of how that compares to previous process generations. Um, so there's a couple of you here, I think, that may not know of Silicon Creations or possibly haven't worked with us before, so I'll, I'll start with a quick introduction of the company. Uh, Silicon Creations is a mixed signal IP design company. Uh, we specialize in high performance clocking and high speed data, PLLs and CERTES. Uh, we have a variety of IP in all different process geometries with TSMC from 180 nanometer all the way down to 5 nanometer. Uh, we started 12 years ago, uh, but in the past four or five years, we've really seen our production volume skyrocketing here at TSMC. Uh, TSMC was kind enough to recognize us for some of this success. Of course, this means lower risk for our mutual customers, uh, reliable IP, and so um, basically at this point, we've got about 500 chips in mass production using our designs and millions of wafers shipped. So for new customers, uh, this is a big differentiating factor. Uh, today I'm going to highlight just one of those IPs. Uh, this is our uh, ring oscillator based fractional PLL. Uh, this is kind of our flagship product. A lot of you who have heard of us know or think of us as a PLL company. Um, this is a multi-purpose SOC PLL. Uh, it can be used for almost every common clock on your chip. And the reason I'm highlighting it today is because we have this ported to essentially every TSMC process node. Uh, so it serves as a really good benchmark to compare the design effort and complexity of the different processes. Again, today we want to focus on 5 nanometer and how that compares to the previous generations. Uh, so I'll, I'll jump quickly through the marketing stuff. Uh, I want to get to the technical discussion as fast as possible, but uh, we, we really do love uh, talking to our customers, learning about your uh, challenges that you're facing, and, and trying to figure out ways that our IP can help uh, get you into production faster, lower your risk, uh, lower your cost, and so on. Uh, again, as I mentioned, we do PLLs and CERTES. Unfortunately, with the 10-minute time slot, I can only talk about the PLLs today. Um, but once again, we have a wide range of uh, multi-protocol CERTES supporting about 30 different standards. Uh, so if you do have high-speed data requirements, uh, please come and talk to us. Basically, there's no uh, agreed metric to answer the question, how hard is it to work in a process? Uh, so we've kind of put together a couple different metrics, um, somewhat qualitative, uh, just to give you a sense of, of how 5 nanometer fits in and what you can expect uh, when you get to this process node. Uh, the first one here is analog scaling. So uh, for anyone who's taking your 180 nanometer chip and porting it straight to 5 nanometer, I doubt that's anyone, but let's just say theoretically, uh, and you're expecting an 800x reduction in area, but you have a lot of analog. Uh, you may be disappointed. Um, however, you will get some scaling. Uh, what we found from 180 nanometer down to 5 nanometer, we got about an 8x reduction in area for our analog circuits. Uh, we found that analog scaling roughly goes as the density of capacitors. That's kind of a loose rule of thumb. And of course, as we go to tighter geometries, we get uh, smaller metal spacing and so on, we can pack in more analog circuits. Uh, interestingly, from 16 to 5, the FinFET nodes, uh, we don't get too much scaling. And this is for a lot of reasons, um, including uh, a lot of metal density rules, uh, guard ringing rules for matching, uh, wider spacing between different device types, and so on. Uh, so if you were in 16 porting to 5, maybe a more realistic scenario, uh, be careful with your floor planning. The 5 nanometer analog does scale, but maybe only 10 to 30 percent. Okay, a uh, whole different angle here. Uh, these are entirely non-scientific, but uh, we're again trying to give you a sense of how, what you can expect when you get the 5 nanometer. Uh, the first one is design rule manual size, the, the, the universally accepted metric. Uh, this is measured in number of pages of the design rule manual. It's kind of a proxy for how hard it is to design in the process. And, and the good news is um, from 180 nanometer to 5 nanometer, it's only about a factor of three and a half. So uh, for those of you starting in 180 nanometer, uh, for those of you starting in 180 nanometer, it's not too scary going all the way to five. The design complexity, the, the way you've always designed your circuits is not going to change 
uh, when you go to FinFET or when you go to 5 nanometer particularly. Uh, the next one is number of GDS layers. Uh, I just want to clarify, this is for our fractional PLL, which we have in every one of these process nodes. This is not in the PDK. If you want to know the exact number of layers in the PDK, you'll have to sign an NDA and talk to TSMC. Uh, so for our fractional PLL, we found from 180 nanometer to 5 nanometer, it's about a factor of 7. Uh, to me, this is good news. That's kind of manageable. It means it's not going to be that much difficult. We all know it's going to be more difficult when you go to FinFET. We see a big jump from 28 nanometer to 16, but if, if you're porting from 7 to 5 or 16 to 5, it's not too much to be worried about. Your existing infrastructure should work for you. Uh, now the last one's where it gets a little scary. Uh, so we go from uh, linear axis to logarithmic axis for <laughs> DRC runtime. Uh, this has been a challenge for us. Uh, going from 7 nanometer to 5 nanometer, we found it takes about six times longer to run an equivalent DRC. This is, again, uh, DRC runtime on our fractional PLL top level, 6x longer. So uh, one takeaway from this is make sure uh, you've built up sufficient computing power or figure it out with TSMC or in Cadence and Synopsys or whoever how you're going to get cloud computing or, or something more powerful if you want to keep similar schedules in 5 nanometer. Okay, uh, this is kind of some design advice. Uh, if you've ever uh, designed in planar, you draw your schematics, you run your simulations, send the design off to the layout team, they send you back a netlist, you sign off and tape out. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore in FinFET, and especially not in 5 nanometer. Uh, the routing parasitics have gone up significantly, almost a factor of 7. Uh, this can have a big impact on your high-speed designs. Even for short routes, you can get significant RC time constants. In FinFET, you can expect to start with the layout and iterate through RC extraction. Uh, I, I want to warn you of this because the last thing you want to do is get to the end of your design cycle and think you're going to tape out and then realize that the RC extracted results are significantly different. In 5 nanometer, we don't even run schematic simulations. Schematics are just to get the structure of the layout. I see some of you are recognizing that experience. It's true in 7 as well. It's not a problem as long as you know what to expect and you've developed an appropriate design flow and floor, floor plan in an appropriate way. Uh, the last one is simulation time. Uh, the story is very similar to DRC. Uh, we're seeing about a 6 to 10x increase in simulation time from 7 nanometer to 5 nanometer. Uh, this is for multiple reasons, the complexity of the model, the number of elements. Um, from 28 nanometer, if you started in 28 nanometer and you're going to FinFET, please make sure you have sufficient computing capacity to deal with these longer run times. Uh, Silicon Creations, uh, because of the secrecy of the advanced node process and the inability to go into the cloud, we've actually built a massive computing farm in our office, 2,200 CPU machines, some of the fastest consumer-grade computers in the world, uh, water-cooled CPUs. Our air conditioning unit is like 150 kilowatts. It's, it's massive. Um, it doesn't mean you have to do that, but you at least have to negotiate and get access to a cloud computing or some type of massive parallel computing in order to deal with this. If you have one SPICE license, you probably can't tape out in 5 nanometer. By the way, we have about 1,200 SPICE licenses, so that, that's about the scale of what's needed to go through a reasonable project schedule. Back in September, I presented at the TSMC OIP platform with lots of details about how our 7 nanometer silicon correlated to our 7 nanometer uh, simulations. Uh, we got very good correlation, both for jitter, phase noise, power, uh, lock time, and so on. If, if you want to see all the details, it's on the TSMC website or come by our booth and I can give you a link. The takeaway is using this massive parallel computing flow and the same methodologies that you've used from 180 nanometer to design your circuits, you can still get very good performance correlation in 7. And I'm hoping uh, next year when the 5 nanometer silicon spec will have another talk to show the 5 nanometer correlations as well. Uh, this is a low power 5 microwatt PLL where we also got a very accurate simulation correlation between the TSMC models and the silicon. Um, and that uh, wraps up my presentation. So thank you for joining.